Welcome back everyone. This week I'm giving you that fun tutorial that I promised you last week. And uh, this tutorial is going to be on how to build a configurator. And uh, here's an example of that. If you've ever shopped for a car online or just played around with the options for a car online, you've probably seen that you can get visual feedback on what options you're putting together. Like here I'm able to change the color of the car and then below I'm able to change the color of the wheels. Uh, in this case I've got a standard wheel, a sportier wheel, and a black sporty wheel and then in the middle I've also got my brake caliper color so I'm able to throw some yellow brake calipers on there some red brakes I'm thinking red car black wheels red calipers looks pretty cool and now I know that I like the way that looks so if you want to be able to provide this on your own websites let me show you how I built it and it does start with Photoshop or another image editor because you want to get the elements in the right spot and you want to make sure that the elements look right when they're put together so you can see over here on the right hand side in my Photoshop layers palette that I do have a bunch of layers and what those are are the pieces of my layered composition. I've got the different body colors of the car, I've also got the different brake calipers by themselves, and I've got the different wheel colors by themselves. So usually you're putting this together from photographs that are either your own or that were provided to you. And when you get those photographs put together, you're going to be cutting stuff out. It's going to be kind of a pain in the neck. But once you get everything cut out and you get it positioned where it needs to be positioned on its own separate layer in Photoshop, then you can spit it all out as transparent PNGs and then you can drop those into Muse. So if you guys are advanced Photoshop users, uh, you probably already know how all this goes. But if you're not, um, hopefully you can find some tutorials online on how to cut stuff out in Photoshop, etc., etc. But if you're used to using Photoshop and you're able to cut things out, you'll end up with a bunch of separate layers. And then if you want to save some time, you can go up to File and then down to Scripts and you can choose Export Layers to Files. That'll take all of the layers, all the different pieces of your composition and it'll spit them out as PNG files. So here we want to choose File Type PNG and we want to do PNG 24, that's the higher quality. And we do want Transparency but we don't want to trim layers. This is actually really important. If you trim the layers, then they won't line up when you get them into Muse. And what trim means is take away all the extra transparent pixels that are around the design. So the car would be trimmed down so there's nothing extra around the car. Then the brake calipers would get trimmed down so there's nothing extra around those which would not match the car because the brake calipers are smaller than the car. So I do not want to trim layers. And then I can run this and export it to the selected folder. Now what you end up with looks something like this. A bunch of images sitting in a folder. But they're PNG, so they're on a transparent background, so we'll be able to reassemble these in Muse. So this is where you want to end up before you get to Muse. You want to end up with a bunch of PNG files, including your background, if you want to have these on a background picture. And you want those to be sitting nice and organized in a folder. Now essentially what we're going to do in Muse is make a slideshow of each part. We're going to make a slideshow of the wheels, we're going to make a slideshow of the brake calipers, and we're going to make a slideshow of the body color of the car. So to do that, we want to go back to Muse, and I can show you here what I've got established, but I'd rather show you from scratch. So I'm going to go to a blank canvas here, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so it all fits on my screen. And now if you want to save yourself a lot of time, instead of going to the widgets library and building this from a blank composition, I recommend going to museresources.com and going to libraries and downloading the Pro Info Cycler. Not the Pro Info Cycler on the iPhone or on the laptop. You want to just download the blank regular Pro Info Cycler. So I'm going to download that now. This will save you a lot of setup time. And when you open up your download, you'll find the Moolib file. Double click on that and it puts it into your library in Muse. So now I can grab the Pro Info Cycler and I can drag it onto my page. And the Pro Info Cycler is basically just a big banner and uh, that big banner has some text boxes inside of it. I'm going to go in and delete the text box from each one of these tabs. So I'll go over here to the second tab called Wheels. I'll click and then click again to get inside and grab the text box. And I'll delete that. I'll go to Lifestyle. I'll click up here. I'll click again, grab the text box and delete it. Good. So now I've just got buttons and pictures inside of the composition. So if I click up here, the way the Pro Info Cycler is built is that each tab has a 
target area above it and the target area is filled with the picture. So what you want to do is before you fill this with your pictures, you want to find out how big your canvas is in the first place. So I want to come over here and it looks like all of mine ended up being 1280 by 560. I could have trimmed these down a little bit in Photoshop before I exported them all, but it's most important that they match. It's more important that they match than anything else. So they are all 1280 by 560 because I didn't trim the layers on export. I left them at their original size. So I now want my composition to be 1280 by 560. I at least want my target area of the composition to be 1280 by 560. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to look for the transform panel here. And I'm going to type in 1280 by 560. Great. And now that I've done that, I've covered up my buttons. So let me scoot this up and center it a little bit better on the page here. And I could scoot these buttons down if I want to. Let me scoot the entire composition down, actually. And uh, I'm going to zoom out more. And I'm going to drag it way down to make some space. Because I haven't even put my background in yet. Um, I probably should have done that first, but it's not too late. I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab my background image. Because that's not part of the slideshow. It's not part of any one of the three slideshows that we're going to build. So I'm going to drag that in onto my canvas. And it's already the right size because when you drop something into Muse, it keeps it at its original size unless you drag otherwise. So I just dropped it in there at its original size. It looks like these line up nice, but this isn't in the back. So I might want to give it a little right click or a two finger click if you're on an Apple laptop and I will arrange and send it to the back. So that way this ends up on top of it. So now the problem is we've got a solid slideshow. This is a solid slideshow that is going to obscure the background that's behind it. Well, that's because we haven't placed our PNGs of our various parts of the composition in there yet. So I'm going to start on the very first tab here, which is named Suit in the Pro Info Cycler. Uh, you can type whatever you want in there. But I'm going to start on this first tab, and I'm going to set my fill and go to Image and click on the little folder down there. And now I've got to go and I've got to find, uh, I've got to find that fill. So. I believe I put mine on the desktop inside of a Muse folder. I probably should have set this folder in a more convenient place before I got started. And because I'm running Mavericks, my finder is super duper slow, so bear with me. Here we go. And I'm going to open up Muse 7.2 Configurator. Okay, so here's where I put all my PNGs. So now I want to start by choosing what this slideshow is going to be. I recommend creating the slideshow for the furthest back element. So what I mean is if you're putting cases on an iPhone or if you're putting wheels on a car, uh, the thing that it's going on should be the first thing. So the car, in my case, should be the first thing. So I'm going to start with the red one, and I'm going to open it up, and boom, there it is. Looks pretty darn ugly because you'll notice this has a color fill. We've got a color fill inside this box that's black. That ain't right. We want a transparent box. So set the color to be the white box with the line running through it. There we go. So now we've got our car image on a transparent background, which will eventually be slid up here onto the photographic background. And we can go to the second tab and do the same thing. So I'm going to select the target, which is the top part where the picture is. I'm going to go to fill. I'm going to choose the correct image, which is going to be the orange car in my case. I'll open that up and I'll set the color for this to be on a transparent background. And I'll do the last one. Go to fill, find the image, the black car, and I'll set the transparent background. There we go. So you'll notice this first slideshow is one category of thing that people have an option to change. So in this case, it's the body color of the car. All three of these pictures are the body color of the car. And it's just a regular old composition and the Pro Info Cycler just saved us a little bit of time not setting it up from scratch. But you could, of course, do this from scratch if you want to. And then at the bottom where it says Suit, I could type in Red or Red Car, whatever I want. I can go over to Wheels, and I could type in Orange. I can go over to Lifestyle, and I can type Black, because that is what the pictures correspond to. So now that I've got this first slideshow, so to speak, set up, I'm going to preview it in the browser and make sure it works you can choose file and then preview in browser. So I've still got my background way up here. And then if I come down here, good, it works. But you'll notice the cars are sort of driving away and appearing. You do have the choice of having them fade from one to the next, 
or having them sort of drive from one to the next or side to side swipe. Uh, and all of that is in the little blue triangle that appears in the top right corner of the composition. Here we've got transition horizontal. If you don't want it to slide horizontal, you could choose fading. Fading is the most traditional where it'll just fade from the first one to the second one to the third one. Oh, a little message there. That's good. Let's turn on do not disturb mode. There we go. That's more like it. And we can or do not have to enable swipe. If you're creating um, mobile websites, enabling swipe allows people on uh, iOS devices, iPhones, iPads, or Android devices to use their finger to swipe from one option to the next. So it's up to you if you want to enable swipe. But everything here is good to go, but transition speed is a preference and the transition type uh, right up above is a preference. So you set that however you'd like. So I'm going to navigate away from this. Now, here's where it starts becoming interesting. Uh, I'm going to move the car up here onto the background. I'm going to scooch this up and put it on the background. And it doesn't so matter so much matter how I line it up in my case, but yours might matter a little bit more. Um, but that looks good where it is. And now I'm ready to create the second part. And in my case, that's going to be the brake calipers because the brake calipers have to be on top of the car, but they need to be behind the wheels. So to create that second one, I'm going to cheat. I recommend clicking away from everything. Just click on the gray background and then hold the alt or option key and drag your composition down to duplicate it. You're essentially copying and pasting and positioning all in one step. So it's much quicker than copying and pasting. Nice little trick. So now that I have my second composition down here, I'm going to switch all the images, all these background images to be wheels. Or I'm sorry, actually before I do the wheels, I got to do the brakes. So I'm going to choose fill for this first one. I'm going to choose which image. Let's see, I got too many little tiny images here. So I'll start with the black brakes. And then I'll go to the second trigger or you might call it a tab, but they're officially called triggers. So I'm going to go to the second trigger, set the image to the next brake calipers. I guess yellow would be the next one. And then I'll go to the last trigger, and I will set the target to be the red brake calipers. There we go. All right, so now that I have all that set up, I've got my second slideshow, my second layer here, and I've got to change the names of things. These are not red brakes. These are now black followed by yellow, I was being a stubborn little thing, yellow, followed by red, I believe was last, last and definitely not least, red. I may have mixed that up, but that's okay. Now here's where things become uh, a little tricky in Muse. Uh, you are able to do something kind of fancy here if you want to, and in our example, we do not want to do this, but you are able to create a nested composition, which means a composition inside of a composition. And if you just drag this up to the one above, it will think that that's what you're trying to do. And this composition will be part of whatever target you're looking at right now. So do I want the brakes to be part of the picture of the red car? No, I want the brakes to be its own separate slideshow. So I need to be very careful right now. And the way to avoid absolute chaos is to lock everything that's below what you're dragging on top of. So watch this. Let me show you the, the catastrophic example. If I drag this up, just all willy-nilly, and I drop it, I have now put the brakes inside the composition for the red car. See, the brakes and the red car are now stuck together. If I click inside the red car twice, I can get in there and I can move the brakes. But now I have a composition inside a composition, and my life is getting complicated. Not a good thing. So I'm going to hit undo a bunch of times. And now I'm back to here. What you want to do is select the objects up here, especially the composition you just created, that first layer. Get that selected, and then you can come up here to Object and choose Lock. When you do that, you don't have to worry about accidentally putting one composition inside of another. And once you have it locked, you can line things up and you can really take your time. Now what I also want to be sure to do is get the navigation of this layer to not be right on top of the navigation for the other layer. So I'm going to scoot it so that it's just below, and then I'm going to click again on the target so that way I can slide the target up separately from the navigation. Now if you're struggling with moving pieces of a composition around, just keep in mind, the first time you click on a composition, you're selecting everything. You're selecting the target and the trigger. 
So the navigation and the picture, therefore, uh, and you're moving them together. When you click again on the target, then you're going inside the composition and selecting the target by itself. If you click again on the navigation, or the triggers as they're called, then you're selecting those by themselves. But just remember, the first time you click on a composition, you're grabbing both. So if you're not trying to move both, click again on the thing that you're trying to move. So now that I've got this established, I can Option or Alt drag again, and I can start working on the wheels. So I'll go up to Fill, choose my image, find the wheels I'm looking for, bada boom. I'll go to the next trigger, which will load up the next target, and I will set the image fill for that to be the second set of wheels. And then the third fill, oops, I'm still on the, on the trigger. Uh, I make that mistake a lot, so you wanna go back up to the target, make sure the target's selected. Go to fill, choose my little folder here, and the last one, the black wheels. There we go. Now I don't wanna forget to lock the layer that I just did because I locked the layer before that, but I didn't lock the one that I just, just did. So I wanna select that, I wanna go up to Object, choose Lock, and now I'm good to start dragging this up. So see, I clicked it once, so I'm dragging both the uh, triggers and the target at the same time. But now that I have everything kinda where I want it, I'm gonna click again on the target to scoot it the rest of the way up, so it lines up with the rest of the car. And that's looking about lined up. And wherever you set your triggers right now, is where the triggers will be set when the page loads. So I'm gonna set them all to the very first option. And now with the wheels, uh, I can rename these triggers. We could say boring for those wheels, and we could say sporty for these wheels, and then we could say black for these wheels. And now when we preview it in the browser, it doesn't matter that those things are locked. They will be unlocked for the user in the browser. So now I can click to orange, to black, change in the body color, Got the brake calipers, which are still set on fade, because remember I duplicated my original composition, which was set to fade. And then the wheels fade as well. So if you'd like, you can have different elements animate in different ways. For instance, in my original example, I had the car fade in color, but I had the brakes slide from side to side using the horizontal transition. So I hope you guys get a kick out of this. Maybe you learned a trick or two. Uh, maybe you just got some inspiration on layering compositions on top of one another. Um, but if you liked it, I hope you're subscribed already. But if you're not, please subscribe. I will have more cool stuff coming soon.